Hello, everyone. Welcome to John Redman, Power of Attorney, the show that aims to empower you through knowledge of the law. I'm attorney John Redman. And hello, everyone. I'm Shauna Sanford. Welcome to the show. We have an empowering show for you today. More and more people are representing themselves in court today, but there is a lot to consider when undertaking such a task. Still, if you have the right tools, your chances of being successful greatly increase. But where do you go to get the help? The Law Library of Louisiana should definitely be on your list. And this week and next week, we're going to tell you what the library has to offer and go over some helpful tips and how to do legal research, whether you're serving as your own advocate in quarter, you simply want to better understand certain legal topics. Our guests today are law librarians Georgia Chadwick and Fran Norton from the Law Library of Louisiana. And you don't have to be a lawyer to utilize it. It's available to anyone trying to better understand legal issues. Well, John, before we bring in our guests today, I want to ask you, do you ever advise uh, folks to uh, represent themselves in court? Uh, that would be very rare. Uh, frankly, uh, there's an old adage, and it's age old, that says anyone who represents him or herself has a fool for a client. And, and that's because, frankly, um, uh, in order to be a, an attorney, a licensed attorney, you have to go through either three or four years of law school, you have to pass a state certified uh, bar examination, and uh, that is very difficult. It is extremely hard to get that law license. In order to go to court and get past all the legal hurdles, the substantive law, the procedural law, uh, it is uh, very likely you're going to encounter uh, hurdles. It's not just let me just lay my cards on the mm -hmm. table. I'm sure the judge will understand and they'll see that I'm right and I deserve to win. Um, it is a fool's errand to try and do that by and large with very few exceptions. Yeah. But I think we're going to hear more about um, more about that discussion in today's show. And I'm, I'm looking forward to, forward to it. I really am. Coming up next, Georgia Chadwick and Fran Norton from the Law Library of Louisiana. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. everyone and welcome back to the show. Well, if you have a legal dispute and you've decided to go it alone without a lawyer, how do you begin to prepare your case? There's a lot that you can do on your own, but it really is a very serious undertaking that you need to consider. And we're going to talk about the many resources that are available at the Law Library of Louisiana today. The Law Library is located on the second floor of the Louisiana Supreme Court building on Royal Street in the French Quarter. It's open to the public and it contains all kinds of great resources. Joining us today are Georgia Chadwick, Director of the Law Library, and Fran Norton, who heads up public services. Thank you both for being with us today and talk to us about this. Is this Law Library open to anybody who, who can go in there and what does it cost? Well, actually the Law Library has been open to the public since 1838. Um, we provide access to all citizens of the state, and uh, it's it's there 150,000 volumes, so there's <laughs> plenty to look at. Since 1838, by my math, we're marking 175 years as of the taping of the show. We're still at the tail end of uh, uh, 19, uh, 19, excuse me, 2013. Uh, 175 years. Well, congratulations. Right. It, our name wasn't originally the Law Library of Louisiana but um, those are the roots of our existence to that act in 1838. In the 1940s is when we became the Law Library of Louisiana. And it's free? It's free. Um, we, don't, uh, we do charge for copies if, uh, if you want to uh, copy something from a book or, or from a website, a, a database, we charge a, a modest fee. We also, um, we don't check books out to anybody but the judges. Uh, and their staff. Mm -hmm. That's because the judges from the Louisiana Supreme Court are right there in the same building, right? They are, and the Fourth Circuit judges are right in our building as well. Wow. And speaking of that building, John, I know you've been there uh, many times. I have. It's, a <laughs> it's, it's, it's absolutely a beautiful building. It's a beautiful law library. There's also a museum in that building. Mm -hmm. um, I have argued cases both in the Supreme Court building there many times, the Fourth Circuit building. I've done research in that building. Uh, at the law library, um, uh, it's it's one of these treasures that we have here. In fact, uh, uh, the chief judge of the Fourth Circuit has called it the best kept secret. The law library is yes. the best kept secret in yeah. the French Quarter. That's yeah. what he says. And while we're talking about this, for folks who haven't seen it, we actually have some pictures that we want to go ahead and bring up. And uh, Fran, perhaps you um, could start telling us a little bit about them. 
uh, when folks first come into the library, uh, we have a desk right here. That's on the second floor when you go into this building. And you, you enter from up. Royal Street, correct? Correct. Go through security right. and come up. You can take either stairs or an elevator. Oh, yeah, and there's a picture of the stairs. Wait a minute, we'll see these stairs. Now, what's this we're looking at? That's a reading room. Um, the library also offers wireless uh, internet connection, so you can bring your laptop. And that's free as well, right? Mm -hmm. The connection, okay. That, you'll see one of our portraits. More, We have a portrait collection throughout the building, and so there are a number of them in the library. Fran, tell us about those. Um, we have six terminals for the public to use. Um, these are three of them. We have access to Westlaw, um, Hein Online, uh, Gale Legal Forms, many other databases where folks can conduct their own research. And unlike what uh, lawyers have to pay for, you pay for these services away from that Supreme Court. If, like in my law office, we use Westlaw, and we pay a pretty penny to use this. While you're at the law library, this is free for you to, uh, to access, mm -hmm. do research. Um, and uh, of course, if you want to uh, make a copy of anything or print anything up, uh, there's a very modest charge for each page printed, correct? Correct. We only charge 25 cents per page printed out. Okay. This, this shows. Um, are some exhibit cases we do regular exhibits we usually do a an exhibit every year for law day this is an exhibit on john adams um, who was the first lawyer president wow and that and that exhibit is currently uh, on exhibit it is and um, this is what exhibit is this john adams this is john adams and then we also as we mentioned in the museum have a number of exhibits um, we have a women in law timeline that shows the progression of of women in law starting from Maryland, I think in the 16, 1700s. And we did that for um, the National Association of Women Judges meetings. Chief Justice Johnson was uh, one of the, the hosts, and so it was a lot of fun to, right. to put that together. Uh, first African-American uh, Chief uh, Justice, Justice Lady here in Louisiana. And I think it's so interesting to point out that it's not just if you're doing legal research, but there's so much history here. I mean, it's a great resource for people who are history buffs. It is. Fantastic. Since and um, it's such a gorgeous, gorgeous architectural uh, building, building. Bo Beaux Arts. This um, this is a title page. We we often uh, on tours take people into our rare book room, which is a very special room. And this is the title page from what's popularly known as the Napoleonic Code. This is the Code Civil des Français, published in Paris in 1804. Yeah, and if you hold on this frame for a second, in the background, this is part of our montage at the beginning of each show. That is the outside of the, uh, the building right there. It's such a gorgeous building, and it's a statue of E.B. White, um, uh, who was a Louisiana judge who went and sat on the U.S. Supreme Court, uh, uh, I guess about 100 or so years ago. Well, about 100 years ago. Um, it's such a beautiful building. I wish I had a, a better picture of the outside of the building to show you now, but, um, but I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just wanted people to see the outside of the building. And if you come on a tour, we'll tell you why the statue's there and why it's not in Washington, D.C. Ah, okay, okay, good. <laughs> and the tours, is there a charge for the tours? No, tours are free. Uh, you would contact groups, would group tours, would contact Valerie Willard in our community relations department, and she schedules them for we have visitors from around the world. We have school children. Um, Schools can contact you for tours? Yes. What's the best way to contact you? Uh, Valerie Willard um, at the Louisiana Supreme Court. And her phone number yeah. is 310-2590. That's area code 504. 504. What's that number again? 3102590. And quickly tell us, though, the picture they just took it down. Oh, yeah. It was up there for oh, quite some yeah. time. But, but tell us about the that last, last slide. slide. There, it is. there it is. Well, if you, you know, if you're interested in the history of Louisiana law, it's not just French, it's also Spanish. And this is um, a title page, hand colored, of the Siete Partidas. Um, this is a, an edition of it, and it's from um, <clears throat> the mid 1700s, this particular edition. So that's a Spanish law book, which was a great influence on ultimately our civil code. Right. It was a from very big influence. years ago. We mm -hmm. just marked our, our yes. bicentennial. But you, you uh, told me something that I thought was very interesting and did not realize, because you hear the Napoleonic Code when you hear about, when people talk about Louisiana law, but really we did not ever formally adopt it. Is that right. correct? Our legislature never adopted it as Louisiana law. It was a major influence on Louisiana's Civil Code of 1825. So it's, it's an influence, but it was never our law. Our, Louisiana has its own law. We've written our own unique uh, 
mixed jurisdiction. <laughs> right. There's there's a lot of French law influence, mm -hmm. a lot of Spanish law right. influence, and English. Yeah. And and, and, and frankly, um, today there's so many. Uh, when you study law, Comical. you see. Uh, well, I know that from today in our law books, you see so many uh, French words uh, in our mm -hmm. laws today. Uh, that carry over from the uh, French laws that were in place in Louisiana while we were under French rule. And I'm sure there are Spanish words in there too. Um, but uh, anyway, we, we have more stuff to get to. I just thought that was a really interesting um, comment that you shared with us before we taped. Well, as we mentioned, the law, lib law library is open to the public, and uh, there's so much data out there about people who are trying to represent themselves. Maybe they see it on television and really think that they can go into any courtroom and handle it. So you all get a lot of questions from the public. So Fran, if you could give us some idea someone who comes there trying to do legal research, where do they begin? How do they start? They'll come to you there or they'll, one of the other libraries, They'll come correct? to me or one of the other individuals at reference. Mm -hmm. um, what we can do is show them sources of primary law here in Louisiana. We can show them the code and the revised statutes. Uh, they come with indexes and they can start with the indexes looking up terms that apply their situation, mm -hmm. and then maybe find a particular article or statute that applies to that. Yeah, but to be very, very clear, you all are not there to advise them in any capacity, although I'm sure you get a lot of those questions. Correct. What should I do, where should I go? Um, we do not tell people what the law is. Uh, we cannot advise them or guide them in their own research. Mm -hmm. But help us to understand, and, and folks out there who are watching, you know, what they need to consider or what they need to realize when doing legal research. Um, some individuals believe that they're an intelligent individual. I'll just look in a book and figure it out myself. What they fail to realize is we have a legal system that's been over 200 years in the making. It's highly complex. Individuals spend three years in law school. They then learn from an older attorney they're working with the ins and outs of how to conduct civil procedure, filing motions. And so they also don't realize that their own individual situation is far more complex than they mm -hmm. realize. Mm -hmm. They may think it's just one issue yeah. when it's really 10 different issues. A simple divorce, I'm sure you've heard that. There's no such thing no as such a simple thing. divorce. <laughs> yeah, and let me add to that. I, I've been doing, um, I've been practicing as an attorney now for 25 years, uh, and I focus my practice on uh, one or two very specific areas of law. Uh, personal injury, insurance claims, um, and I'm always learning. Every day I'm learning, uh, you know, specific new things in the law and um, and there's an expression master, uh, jack of all trades master of none mm -hmm. and um, I'm always amazed at the attorneys out there who uh, claim to practice 10 different areas of law they do domestic they do traffic they do criminal they do this they do that and I'm thinking master of none they uh, if you don't have a law degree and you think you can handle uh, an issue all by yourself you're you're creating a trap for yourself and um, doing legal research is an art as well and um, you can certainly and I recommend people uh, be interested in your case and learn about it just like you go to the encyclopedia when you have an illness and you want to learn more about that illness your doctor told you you had or if you're facing an operation learn about it and be a participant I like my clients to be interested but go to the law library, learn a lot about it, ask about that uh, ticket you got or that, uh, that illness or whatever it is. I mean, in the law library, whatever it is. But um, don't attempt to be your own lawyer, except for maybe something really minor. Right, yeah. as you mentioned, if you get a ticket, um, there will be a code number on that ticket. That's we a can law, a code correct. number is a law. Um, here for Orleans Parish, we have a code of ordinances and we can show you that ordinance, but that tells you nothing about how to proceed next, hmm. whether it's your how to go forward and try to fight that. And something else very interesting, while people have access to the law library, as we mentioned, you can't access it online. You have to physically come to the library to do the research, is that correct? That's correct. Our, our contracts don't allow remote access. Say at a university where everyone is, has a student ID, we don't have, um, we couldn't possibly, you know, get a license that authorized all the citizens of the state 
to, to use uh, an online resource. Okay, well, we have to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have viewer questions for both of you. More about the Law Library of Louisiana and your questions. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after this. Hello everyone, welcome back to the show. Well, all week long we've been getting questions about legal self-help and research. So we're gonna get right to your questions and uh, our guests today are Fran Norton and uh, Georgia Chadwick from the Law Library of Louisiana. And one of the questions that we have from our viewer is um, how much does it cost to use Westlaw? Now we talked about Westlaw, that is available for, for folks there in the library. What is it and uh, does it cost to use it? Yes and no. <laughs> um, Westlaw is a legal database. Um, currently, it's owned by Thomson Reuters, but it began as the West Company. It was a legal publisher in print. And as we've gone digital throughout the world, legal publishing has also gone digital. And so what we provide is access to legal materials through, with an online medium. Okay. That's the format we use. Okay. And we pay for it at the library as part of our subscription to different legal publishers, but we don't charge the individual to use it. Okay, so so I come to the library and I just got that ticket that we were just talking about mm -hmm. before we went to the break, and I use the code. I would say I need to look up this code. Um, would I use Westlaw as my resource for looking up that code? Probably not. I direct you either to, we have the New Orleans Code of Ordinances in print. Okay. It's also available from unicode.com. Okay. Anyone can go to that for free and look up um, from your home computer. Shows. From your home computer. Unicode.com. Unicode.com. Okay. But that would tell me, all that would tell me is exactly what the ordinance says, correct? Correct. But that you've not, been accused of violating. Right. But it would not tell me anything about how to proceed. Correct. That's civil procedure is entirely different. Okay. So if I come back to you and I say, okay, well, I have this statute or I have this ordinance now, now where do I go? What would you then say to me? We have some generic books on court rules, uh, civil procedure in Louisiana and we could sit you down and you could read those. Okay. But that's still not an adequate preparation for going to court. Yeah, and, and let me weigh in here. In, in other words, what people would like is a free law clinic. Let me walk in there, let me tell them what happened to me, I got a ticket or I'm facing a divorce, I'm, my ex-husband, uh, my ex-spouse wants to uh, take the kids and I don't think it's fair tell me what to do tell me just point me in the direction of the books and I want to go fight over this um, uh, the law librarians as much as they're caring individuals and they would like to be able to help you their hands are tied they can't help you and they certainly can't help you in five minutes or 30 minutes you need to get the help of a law clinic let's say you don't have money see if you can find a law clinic Loyola Law Clinic Tulane Law Clinic in, the, in southeast Louisiana uh, they may be able to help you southeast Louisiana legal services if you go to POA.com um, um, we'll put on there a um, a site where you can find uh, legal help. If you have, are facing criminal prosecution, um, you can get a lawyer appointed if you cannot afford one. But law libraries, law librarians, your hands are tied. Uh, uh, they cannot attempt to offer legal advice because they're not equipped to do that. Mm -hmm. The resources aren't there and they're just simply not there appointed to do, to, to do legal work. Um, I don't mean to speak for you, but Certainly. that's what I understood very clearly from yes. you guys. But, but it just makes sense. They're there to tell you you want a law book, you want to find a certain statute, they'll tell you where to find the statute, they'll tell you where to find the books, right? Correct. An analogy I make with some folks is if you walked into a medical library and tried to pull some books on surgery because you want to operate on yourself, <laughs> it, it's really not feasible. Yeah. yeah. And you can't train them how to do uh, medicine. Correct. You can, if they want to find a book on, you know, what is an appendectomy, you can show them where to find Correct. that book if this was the medical library. Uh, we also have a number of secondary sources which would be legal encyclopedias, treatises, uh, restatements. And those sources explain an area of law to an individual and full of footnotes to other resources. Okay. So rather than invent the wheel and try to do their own research, they could read a treatise. And again, it wouldn't prepare them for court, but it would illustrate an area of law for them. Okay, Georgia? Well, I was gonna say, of course, if you're also, Fran mentioned, uh, a free muni code, you know, you're there, you can use our computers to do legal research and we may be able to point you to some free resources, you know, while you're there. Um, 
So that's a, an advantage of coming in and, and taking advantage of the, the knowledge our reference librarians have in Fran's department. Okay, we got a question from Rebecca. She says, what is LexisNexis and can anybody use it? Yes, anybody can use that. <laughs> LexisNexis is another online database prepared by Lexis, which was a print publisher for the digital age. And we don't have access to that at our library for the public. But if you wish to access from your home computer, you can certainly pay. Okay, all right. And Nicole says, can anybody go into a courthouse and get a copy of a mortgage? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> it, I mean, you're not, you're, you're, you are a courthouse, but the law library is simply within a courthouse. Right. And I don't think you have mortgages inside no, the Louisiana not Supreme Court. Our appellate court, court, or court no. But <laughs> go ahead. I gotta explain. Many individuals don't realize you have trial courts, um, and then you have appellate courts. And a trial court, um, you can receive a judgment, which only applies to the two parties involved. Mm -hmm. But an appellate court issues an opinion, which applies to everybody within that jurisdiction. And we are not a trial court. We can't go and get a copy of a judgment from your neighbor down the street, what happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you find that you get a lot of the same questions from folks who are trying to do their own legal research coming in there, just, you know, not very versed in how the legal system works? And what, if so, what are some of those common questions that keep coming up? Many people believe that there's a form for everything. Mm -hmm. And they come in and ask for a form to do this or a form to do that. Mm -hmm. And what they don't realize is, while we may have form books, it's not an entire form for everything. It's just pieces of how to fill out a pleading. And lawyers are skilled enough to take those pieces and tailor them to individual factual situations. Mm -hmm. And that's what people who don't have those legal degrees are not you know, well versed in, and that Correct. could make it very difficult. But one of the, I'm sorry, were you about to no, say No, I'm something? just gonna say, and that's just a really good point. A lot of people, and, and they have on television these, these companies that sell you forms. There's, there's companies that say, buy this form book and you can dispense with the lawyer and we will take care of you. And we, you, know, you, you could save a lot of money, just use our forms and we'll take care of you. And I think that that, that is a very dangerous precedent. Um, uh, you get a form as a lawyer you have to have the training to know that you've still got to customize it the expression the devil's in the details if you don't take care of the details as a lawyer and make sure you attend to the details properly you could have a not only a worthless piece of paper you could have a dangerous piece of paper that is uh, malpractice if the lawyer doesn't do it right but it could be devastating to the individual that that form is being used for um you don't realize we have 49 jurisdictions in the country that are common law but Louisiana is a mixed jurisdiction, primarily civil law. And so everything's different here in Louisiana. And we've got 40 different districts, uh, judicial districts. Mm -hmm. And you may have 40 different forms for the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. So if you go in with, you may have paid $400 buying something online, filled it out, and a judge won't accept that. You have to have the proper form to go in. I think that's a great point that you're making because there are lots of folks who might find themselves in that situation where they have spent a ton of money, a good chunk of change for these forms only to find out that they're of no use. Correct. And even if you go to Orleans Parish Civil District Court, get a divorce form, fill it out, it's different over in Jefferson Parish. Um, law is not interchangeable throughout jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. Very good point. Okay, all right, uh, we have a, a question here from Byron. His question is, if I write a contract myself, will it still <laughs> be valid? I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who have that question. Byron isn't alone, um, but is that a valid contract? That's a very good question. <laughs> it may or may not be. Um, that's really a legal question. Yeah and we cannot answer individual legal questions. Mm. Yeah, contracts have certain requirements and it depends on whether or not you have all the, the requisite points in it. Uh, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, and uh, frankly, you're gonna need to talk to a lawyer about that. Or um, uh, frankly, you ought to talk to a lawyer about that. Well, we're closing in on the end of the show. So before we go, just some closing comments about the, li the law library um, for the public uh, to understand about uh, you know, how open it is and uh, some important things that they need to know before we leave today. Uh, Fran? Fran, sorry. <laughs> um, well, we're open from 9 to 5, and on Wednesdays we're open until 6 o'clock. Um, anybody can come in. Uh, just come on up. We'll show you 
primary sor sources of law, secondary sources of law, uh, as well as other unique things we have in our library. Okay, Thank all right. You. And uh, well, yes, Georgia. And, uh, just remember that you can come for a tour if you have a group. If you're by yourself, you know, you can have sort of a self-guided tour, but we have a lot to see. You remember we have the portrait collection, the museum, rare books. Um, there's a lot to see in the building. Okay, all right, and there is something that you all are working with. There's an initiative called Access to Justice, right? Excellent. We're right. going to talk about that on the next show. You all are going to stick around with this. It's a very, very interesting initiative. That is all the time that we have for this episode, but don't worry because our conversation will continue next week, so be sure to join us again. Thanks so much to our guests, and thanks to all of you for watching. Remember to send in your questions via Facebook, Twitter, and email, and go to johnredmondpoa.com to watch past episodes and to get more information. Thanks, and we'll see you next week on John Redmond, Power of Attorney.